All right, uh, welcome to the webinar session on the coconut value chains in Southeast Asia, uh, focusing on the experiences of Cambodia and the Philippines. Um, this webinar session is a, a partnership between the two country partnerships of the Grow Asia, which are the Cambodia Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture and the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture. Um, before we officially start, I want to introduce myself. I am uh, VJ, the communications person for the PPSA. And um, to start the webinar uh, session, I would like to um, run down through the uh, webinar rules. So uh, this webinar is uh, recorded to uh, make sure that the general uh, public will not uh, who cannot attend this uh, webinar session will be able to uh, go back and review and listen again to the session and your mic is uh, automatically muted but you have the opportunity to speak during the q a part of the session so we'll give you time to ask questions and of course just raise your hand using the available zoom function and for questions kindly use the q a box for better tracking and for technical assistance uh, use the chat box or email us at secretariat at tpsa-ph.org or at info at cpsa-ph.org. All right. So um, as a kickoff, I would like you to respond to the poll that's going to uh, appear on your screen. And um, I want you to share with us uh, from which uh, sector you are from. So I'm giving you 15 seconds to respond to the uh, poll. Okay. Seventy percent. Okay. So there, as you can see, we have a, lo a lot from the academe, NGO, and CSO. Also, we also have a lot also from the private sector and companies and few from the government, financial institutions, and farmer groups or cooperatives. So I think uh, this is a good mix of participants. So we're expecting uh, different, uh, of course, questions and perspectives come the Q&A. So thank you so much for your participation. Okay, to officially welcome us, I am calling on our executive director from Grow Asia, Graham Dixie. Over to you, Graham. Thank you very much, Vijay, and, and thank you everyone for joining, um, you know, watching that poll coming up and, and seeing the diversity of people. It's really exciting and it's, it's exciting because it bringing together diverse expertise, strong representation from the private sector and from civil society. And, and that is the reason for being of the Grow Asian Network and all of the six country partnerships, that what we have learned consistently that if you can capture the diversity of opinion, and here we have people coming from across the region and particularly from Cambodia and Philippines, and you can draw those experiences together, you come up with better decisions and it's the collective brain. And essentially that's what the Grow Asian Network does. Um, I, many of you will know who we are, but for those who don't, essentially we have found that if you can bring together the public sector, the private sector, the producers, and enable them to discuss things, they enable them to have a broader perspective and they can make stronger and better decisions. And that's essentially what we're doing here. What's different about today's event is this is the very first time that two of our country partnerships, i.e. Philippines and Cambodia, have come together to draw on the experience of those two countries and to build up that. And so we're very, very excited about that. And we're very excited about the prospects in this particular sector. If you went into my fridge now, you would see it's packed with coconut water. Um, you know, it's, it, and I mix it with different things and so on and so forth. But 10 years ago, it was completely different. This was, this was just a crop which was just used for a little bit of oil and a little bit of um, fiber. But now it's something completely different. It's now actually seen as a as a product which is finding its way into um, in, into the the larders of, of a much wider range of people. So 
I look forward to the discussion and I look forward to hearing from you all. And I would welcome you to participate because it is by hearing your voices. And we know that the more voices we hear, the better the picture we have of what's actually going on. So please participate. Don't feel embarrassed, but your voices and your opinions and your ideas and your lessons are all going to be important to this important event. So back to you, Vijay. Thank you so much uh, for that, Graham, and as a multi-stakeholder partnership platform that um, that we are, I just want to highlight the need for you know this kind of learning exchanges, especially across Southeast Asia, to learn from the best practices of each other, and um, of course, uh, especially in the context of the ongoing pandemic where food security is um, you know being challenged. All right, um, moving on now. Since this is a CPSA and PPSA event. Uh, and of course, for our coconut stakeholders, we have our two country directors from both platforms to speak about the situation of the coconut industry in the respective countries and the initiatives of the platform with regards to uh, the coconut. So first, may I call on Rata Chan of uh, CPSA to talk about the study done in Cambodia on fruits value chain assessment with focus on coconut. Over to you, Rata. Uh Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rata, uh, Rata Chan. Yeah? Um, I'm the country director of a uh, Cambodian Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture in South PSA. So, uh, actually, yeah, uh, I no need to mention the, uh, uh, about the uh, network. We, I would just go focus on the uh, value chain. So, uh, we have Move next, please. Mm, okay, so um, CPSA is a, as mentioned, multi stakeholder platform. We building partnership uh, here. So we have active ninety seven uh, partner uh, uh, and two hundred fifty plus key stakeholder, five hundred plus mailing list. This one is based on uh, data twenty twenty. So we we are growing now. So next, please. So uh, we work based on the working group. We have uh, four main working group. Uh, we have cashew working group, pepper working group, fruit and vegetable working group, and agri-food SME working group. So the detail you can learn from the, uh, our website. So we, uh, we will share this slide with you and the link is uh, within, within this uh, uh, slide. And also, we have a crop cutting uh, issue focus on contract farming, uh, sustainable and responsible investment, um, especially on uh, ASEAN rice. We are uh, recognized uh, and endorsed by uh, Ministry of Wealth from the Minister of ASEAN Country. And, and also, we have one specific project from the World Economic Forum with the uh, 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 Council Development of Cambodia, based in Cambodia, focus on uh, 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 agro industry, uh, more like sustainable investment in agro industry. And another one, we touch on ag tech solution. Uh, we also have some uh, uh, work and mapping actor in here in, in Cambodia. So if you want to learn more amount of this uh, uh, working group or, or crop cutting issue, please reach, reaching out to us. Yeah, next slide, please. So uh, on January 2019, uh, uh, the CPSA invested uh, on a further effort in order to support the fruit vegetable working group. Uh, so we have hired uh, the one consultant to support this working group. And then by uh, we have a, a, a few activity from that. By October 2009, we we uh, established the vegetable group. And then by May 2020, we expand to the uh, fruit uh, uh, group. So the, we do the fruit value chain assessment uh, uh, of that. There are five commodities uh, and coconut is part of that. Next, please. Uh, 
you can go for it. So this uh, uh, report is uh, available on our website, so you can uh, uh, access it. We have uh, longan, mango, dragon fruit, banana, and coconut. So they are the multi uh, specialized team and organization uh, uh, working on this uh, assessment. Uh, and we have do uh, six provinces and one city. Uh, uh, we are the majority of this commodity allocated. And the key uh, uh, actor, we interview processor, exporter, logistic company, trader, collector, uh, farmer organization, agriculture cooperative, commercial farmer, and relevant government agency like the SPSS uh, and CO exporter. The main objective of the assessment uh, to identify relevant call local actor, uh, SME association cooperative involved in the production, trade, and retail of selected fruit, uh, these five commodity. So again, the list is attached in the report uh, at the end, so you can find out the uh, actor there. And also, uh, we will not share the the detail of the the contact, but if you interest in any actor, please uh, uh, contact us. So it's, we have quite short and limited uh, time and limited resource at that time. So we will not claim this is fully comprehensive of each uh, commodity, but it could give you an overview of the, the, the each commodity. So, uh, and also the fruit group, we are uh, in the process of forming to be formalized soon. Uh, uh, within this year. Next, please. So, uh, coconut value chain. Um, in Cambodia, uh, there are two. Uh, one is from farmer, this very short one. It could be from farmer to the uh, trader or collector, and then go to the market. Uh, or sometimes it's from farmer to a uh, big collector or wholesaler in Phnom Penh uh, from the farmer in the province to the market. So the, the, red, the red line is the sort shortest and, and uh, more focused on the fresh product. But the, the longer, uh, the, the green one are more, more long, uh, long volume chain. So it means from farmer to collector from, and then to the first processing uh, the processing here, uh, it might be different from Philippine uh, experience. Uh, very, um, we call primary processing, uh, not um, so uh, modern. So, uh, but it, in, it, it's learning uh, from, from uh, time to time. And then the second process, processing uh, is more quite modern. We have a few company and one prominent is Coco Khmer. And a few other, but Coco Khmer one is the one we are working with. Um, they can come up with the final product, and then they can and they sell locally, and also they export. Uh, so this is the uh, very summary of the coconut value chain in Cambodia. So they are they are just added. They are interesting of uh, from the uh, last year from Australian company to address to uh, looking at the investment opportunity in the uh, coconut processing and could be transformed to the uh, uh, energy drink for, for sport, yeah, for athlete. So the major coconut production area and cultivation land. So it's mostly in, in, in the uh, coastal, southern coastal province in Cambodia, you can see on the map, in Prasinuville, Sinuville province, uh, Kampung Spu, Kampot. Uh, the, this, uh, this data is 2017. Uh, it, it could be uh, different. Uh, it's 16,935 hectares. And also, uh, currently, another province also on the rise, uh, we call Takeo. It's also it's not far from the, the, the other province. It, it's just nearby uh, uh, between Kampung Spu, uh, Prasienu uh, Kampot and uh, uh, it's some part of Kokong as well, the Kokong province. So because the 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 weather of, 
favorability of the area that near to the sea. So this is where the uh, coconut uh, growing farming is, it should be there. Uh, Kapot, the Kapot province is the major uh, 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 production and also cultivation area in, 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 in Cambodia. And we have one of our coconut processor in, in Cambodia from Kampot here as part of our panelists. Um, normally the coconut, they are the, the, the traditional one is from the smallholder. So they are traditionally uh, growing that. It's just like, uh, it's not a main income, a main crop. It's just supplementing a crop for, for the, the household. So if the land, it could be one hectare or, or two hectare in average. So it, it as you mentioned, it's not naturally grown uh, 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 tree uh, in the in those uh, uh, southern coastal area. Next, please. So there are some suggestion and recommendation from the study for the stakeholder. So the uh, one is about the uh, production of processing. Uh, we it, if we want to export, uh, we need to have uh, uh, a, some kind of standard. So from the production or farming, we should apply the GAP. And uh, for the factory or processing, we should apply the uh, GMP. So this is one uh, of the uh, uh, recommendation from the study. Uh, there should be more incentive for processing factories so that the um, they can have access to modern, so it's more efficient, uh, modern technology, and also more funded. I think the the uh, coconut sector in 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 Philippines are more more well established and and more modern than Cambodia. So the husband from Cambodia or the company from Cambodia could be uh, uh, learned from Philippines and also could be partner uh, together with with uh, the the, the Philippine uh, company. Or actor. Uh, so, as you mentioned, the um, production or processing here in Cambodia is quite new in terms of like commercialization of or, 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 or for or export. A few companies who are tied in in this uh, sector. So, as I mentioned, we should learn from 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 those who are already well established, like like Philippine one. Next, please. And another point is the farmer association or a kind of producer organization should be established or sanctioned because uh, if you want to have a scale, we need to, to have a kind of uh, association or, or a producer organization because this one, it could be sustained production. That is the main one. And also increase the income for, for, for those who are joining uh, because when they are together, they have more better knowledge and information sharing, so they, they know better uh, rather than just uh, uh, separate from, from each other. Uh, more high volume added uh, on the coconut oil processing. So as I mentioned, like before, uh, there are Australian company invest, uh, interested in, in coconut in Cambodia, but the, 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 the difficulty in investment here, they the, the linkage because they need ecosystem, but the they have here in Cambodia they uh, we lack of ecosystem to build a strong uh, uh, processing and up to the final product. For example, like lipstick, shampoo, cosmetic product or energy product for athletic, yeah, for athlete. So this kind of high end product is, is quite um, quite demanding and 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 good good market in international market like Australian. Uh, EU or, or US or Canada. Yeah. Next, please. So the uh, new plantation farming or processing uh, uh, should be uh, motivated so that they will uh, uh, sell or keep the mature coconut rather than the, the selling the young coconut. Because here, as I mentioned in the volume chain, uh, now they are quite popular in terms of selling the fresh uh, or young coconut, uh, fragrant coconut, because uh, this is the, they give, they uh, get, uh, it's a cut crop. They can get money right away from the growing. 
uh, after one one year, two years, they, they can get the money back. So uh, if they keep for the, the, the mature coconut, it's quite, they need to wait, but it, it more, uh, uh, market is more stable. So it, it should be incentive to, for farmer to, to, to keep that mature coconut. And another key recommendation we, we, we would recommend uh, is production cluster concept, where the cluster should be like the nearby province. For example, Kampot one, Kampot provinces the, in Cambodia, in the coast, southern coastal area, should be uh, encouraged to, to cluster with other nearby province who have a, 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 a production base also quite good, quite big. So to do that, uh, we, it will be benefit a lot to the farmer. And also it will be increasing their bargaining power. So the, when we have a, a effective ag aggregate demand on, on, on economic of scale or the total a quality management. So this kind of uh, production cluster should be encouraged and, and the, the government should, should take uh, into consideration and the private company should be uh, 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 looking for this, um, uh, encourage for this kind of concept. Next, please. Yeah, so I think it's, it's that's all from me, uh, Vijay. I will pass the floor to Vijay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Arata, for uh, that comprehensive discussion and, of course, presentation of the result of the um, assessment. And now I'm calling on Ami Chua of PPSA to briefly introduce um, PPSA and the situation of the coconut industry in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Vijay, and good afternoon, everyone. So again, we are Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture. In the Philippines, we get, um, um, next slide, please. We get strategic directions from two of our co-chairs. Um, one is Secretary William Dar of the Philippine Department of Agriculture. And of course, the other one is uh, the Public Affairs Lead of East-West Seed, which is Dr. Mary Ann Sayok. So similar with uh, the country partnerships of Grow Asia, we take pride in um, the combination of these four unique value propositions. So we are multi-stakeholder inclusive, uh, meaning we have various um, stakeholders within the network. We also have uh, our market led. Uh, we ensure that um, we help our partners implement inclusive business and inclusive value chain projects. All, everything that we do are smallholder focused, farmer focused, and we also implement locally driven projects, um, of course, based on crops and even based on locations. So next slide, please. In the Philippines, um, our partners are present mostly in Luzon and Mindanao. And um, on your screen, you will see some of the projects we are engaged in, in various um, crops like coconut, coffee, corn, fisheries, and vegetables. These are also the um, working groups that the PPSA um, have, has. And then um, we also have, outside from this crop-based uh, working groups, we also have thematic or cross-cutting working groups, similar with um, what Ratha mentioned earlier. In the Philippines, we have the agri-financing um, working group, digital agri, and also the learning alliance. Um, next slide, please. Zooming into the coconut working, oh, sorry. Um, in the Philippines, we have uh, more than 90 partners or organization. Mostly these are private companies and the others are government institutions um, and agencies, research um, and academe, and even farmer groups and uh, nonprofit and civil society organizations. Um, through our partners and our network, we have reached 100,000, more than 100,000 smallholder farmers nationwide. Next slide, please. So zoom, zooming into the coconut working group. So it was established in 2017 with various um, uh, players such as input companies, uh, manufacturers, and even civil society organizations. Um, in that working group, we have direct interventions or the um, value chain projects where we facilitate collaborative projects among um, the coconut players. So for example, we've um, conducted some efforts to help a company find supplies of uh, cocoa sugar in the Philippines and um, export them to Indonesia, which they have um, operation in. 
So in terms of sectoral coordination, we also facilitate, of course, large-scale consultation sessions, which are inputs to the um, to policy recommendations and even national action plans that we help the government uh, draft. Next slide, please. So um, although we are yet to conduct value chain studies in Coconut as part of the efforts of the Coconut Working Group, uh, for today, we hope to share with you the um, figures related to the coconut production and coconut farmers in the Philippines. Um, in the next slide, um, you will see the statistics um, in the Philippines. Coconut continues to be one of the top agricultural crops and the, of the land, total land area of uh, 30 million hectares. 13.3 um, uh, million of this are agricultural lands, and of this number, um, 28 to 30 percent, or 3.6 million hectares, are uh, planted with um, coconut trees. In the next slide, so that's the, of course, the map of the Philippines. 69 out of 82 provinces in the Philippines are coconut-producing um, provinces. And this slide shows the top producers in the country. So the biggest areas are mainly in the southern part of the Philippines, as shown in the uh, map. So that's the Davao region with uh, um, approximately 541,000 metric tons of coconut produced per year. And then in northern Mindanao, Sambuanga, next please, thank you, in Bangsamora area, and also some parts in the central Philippines or the Calabar zone region. Um, in the next slide, um, it, it shows that the Philippines, of course, remains as the world's largest and top producer of coconut next to Indonesia. Um, there are 14.8 million metric tons of coconut produced, which amounts to 72 billion pesos or around 1.5 billion US dollars. So other top uh, agriculture products exported by the country are banana and pineapple. This data come, came from uh, the 2020 um, statistics of agriculture from the Philippine Statistics uh, Authority. Um, well, although we are exporting a lot, the country's landscape sees a huge potential in increasing this volume um, should some concerns related to the coconut industry be addressed. So uh, this just shows the exports um, in terms of uh, coconut byproducts in the Philippines um, and their destinations, for example, Netherlands, USA, China, Russia, Australia, Vietnam, and other parts in Asia. So next slide, please. So although the exports are uh, booming and um, there's a slight increase, uh, although an, an, an unstable increase of, of production of coconut in the Philippines, most or the majority of the Filipino farmers, coconut farmers are still below the poverty line. So in the Philippines, there are about 2.5 million coconut farmers and most of them um, earn about 338 or less than, or approximately seven, dollars per day. Um, this is way below the 535 or approximately $10 uh, minimum wage rate in the Philippines. So next slide, please. This slide will show you the current challenges faced by the coconut industry as um, reported by various literature and news in the Philippines and studies in the Philippines. So number one, of course, is low productivity showing problems on capacity or capacity building, technical know-how, aging of current crops, and poor nutrition. Next is market concerns, which includes unorganized supply chains, availability and accessibility of market, vulnerability of the coconut farmers to world price fluctuations and infrastructure, and then next is access to financing, including financing, of course, for research and development apart from financing for the production and post-harvest. And lastly, climate change or the occurrence of typhoons in the Philippines and infestation of pests and diseases. Moving on to the next slide, these are just some of the efforts that the government and other various agri players in the Philippines are conducting um, in the past years and of course this year. The coconut, the first one, Coconut Trust Fund, um, creates a pool of funds that can be used to provide development um, funds for development programs and, of course, improve um, income and uh, yield or productivity of the coconut farmers, among other advantages that we can get from the coconut farmers and industry trust, trust fund. And then, um, as mentioned earlier, um, there are efforts, of course, to um, finalize and craft the Philippine Coconut Industry Roadmap. And just 
uh, a few weeks ago, we've um, presented to decision makers the National Action Plan for Family Farming, which of course covers um, some recommendations, policy recommendations, and even um, activity interventions um, related to coconut uh, farming or production in the Philippines. There's also the establishment of a coconut farmers registry, which will address data um, consolidation and generation problems. Um, and then, of course, continued research and uh, development infrastructure support. And lastly, there are ongoing collaborations led by private companies, specifically the um, Task Force on Zero Hunger or the Pilipinas Contra Gutom, where companies are working together to um, learn more about their value chains and uh, processes, including uh, coconut um, um, mm. companies, which are in this call as panelists today. And uh, they identify gaps and collaborative efforts related to market and financing, capability building, and logistics support. So I think that's my last slide, BJ. I hope uh, we've shared um, clearly the situation of the mm. coconut industry in the Philippines. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that, for the comprehensive uh, report and situation of the coconut industry in the Philippines. And now that you learned a brief overview of that situation um, in both countries, so let us now learn about the challenges, best practices, and opportunities of different companies operating in either countries or both and across Southeast Asia. So we are fortunate to have the leaders of these companies. So for this uh, part of the session, I'll call them one by one, and then we will give them around two to three minutes uh, to introduce their company and the work that uh, the work that they, that they do in relation to the discussion today. And we will also have a Q&A session with them. So to our participants, if you have any question to our panelists, let us know by typing it on the Q&A box. So it will also be helpful if you identify where to direct your questions to. So, all right. So, first off is um, um, I, um, Michelle Voss. I, I'm, I'm not sure about the pronunciation of his name, but um, uh, uh, he is the Chief Technology Officer of Coco Palette International. Um, he is a serial entrepreneur specialized in bio-based products and the founder of Coco Palette. Michelle has set up businesses in Europe, the Caribbean, and Asia. Uh, making the impossible possible is a skill he learned during his time in the army and managing a construction company in the Caribbean. His role within Coco Pilot revolves around sourcing, supply chain, operations, and technology, as well as being the creative and social force within the team. So with that, um, over to you, Michelle. I'll give you around two to three minutes to introduce your company. Thank you. Okay, sorry guys. Um, Michael, Michael got disconnected, um, but let me introduce you about Coco Pallet. So we've developed um, a more sustainable and fully circular pallets made out of coconut waste. So basically we just use primarily the husk, which is um, currently the waste uh, um, it's currently a waste in, 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 in most um, of the coconut industry. Um, of course, the goal is to enable companies to have a more sustainable and um, to be able to lower their carbon footprint in terms of their shipping and in terms of the usage of farmers. In Asia alone, we have 1.7 billion coconut, uh, 1.7 billion pallets that are used um, one time, which means that you know when we export our products from Asia to different parts of the world, at the end of the line of the pallets, these are mostly wasted or landfilled or burned. Um, yeah, of course, Coco Palace is not a silver bullet, um, but of course, a number of companies have been interested. Of course, uh, we, we're still a startup company, um, but we're about to uh, build the first factory beginning in the Philippines. And of course, once we succeed, um, you know, the possibilities are endless. We could expand to Indonesia um, and of course, India at the same time. So yeah, that's, that's who we are. BJ, thanks. All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that, Kiel. Uh, now we have um, Jose or Joey Villa, who is the CEO and co-founder of Radical Kitchen. So Joey Villa's involvement in the food manufacturing industry started 25 years ago working in Auckland, New Zealand as regional manager for uh, James Hardy and later as country manager for Otis Building Technologies. So with a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of the Philippines, he was able to work on projects with Cadbury chocolates, 
Bluebird Fo- Foods and Goodman Fielder. Uh, more recently, he has been instrumental in exporting uh, Philippine organic su- cocoa sugar to over 15 countries and putting Philippine coconut sugar on the shelves of major supermarkets globally. So um, with that, over to you, Sir Joey. Sir Joey, you're on mute, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. My name is Jose Villa, and um, I'm pa- our company, Radical Kitchen, is part of a growing um, uh, s- small to medium size uh, enterprises in the Philippines. We generally concentrate on young coconut meat and coconut sap. So um, we export probably about 95% of the products we produce. So that's why we call it Radical Kitchen. What we found is, uh, I think, uh, based on the two presentations earlier, uh, there's a lot of raw material being produced. But what we're looking at is that we have started to develop products that can go retail. And that's where we've been concentrating on uh, developing products uh, using young coconut meat and the coconut sap to produce coconut sugar, coconut aminos, and the like. So uh, that's our company, Radical Kitchen. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, sir. So our next speaker is uh, Vivien or uh, Bing Nashon, who leads the Copra Sustainability of Cargill Philippines Oil Mills Incorporated. Um, she is a chemical engineer by profession where she finds shifting from food safety, quality, and regulatory function to sustainability as uh, challenging. So striving to succeed in the given role, uh, she was instrumental to the certification of more than 1,000 coconut farmers in two regions in the Philippines on internationally recognized standard, the Rainforest Alliance. So I'm now giving the mic to Ms. Bing Nashon. Okay, thank you for that uh, introduction. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to give you a a background of our value chain. Um, So we are a company that is into the production of crude coconut oil. So basically, our raw materials are coming from the coconut farms. So out of these coconut farms, as uh, uh, coconut farmers actually are uh, part of our uh, segmented suppliers because uh, we also have uh, uh, consolidators and uh, also traders. So we process uh, the copra that are coming from these uh, suppliers and uh, produce uh, crude coconut oil as our uh, main product while the copra meal is our byproduct. And majority of our produce are being exported to uh, Europe and other countries. And we also distribute uh, uh, crude coconut oil and uh, our copra meal locally specific to the feed industries because uh, these are also ingredients in the manufacturing of uh, uh, feed uh, stocks. Okay, so in regards to our sustainability program, as mentioned uh, during the introduction, so I handle now this uh, program, which is uh, involving our uh, small coconut uh, farmers. So in the Philippines, we have two regions where we implemented this uh, program. So what are the benefits of uh, the farmers from this uh, sustainability uh, program? So number one is... uh, we have seen uh, increase in the livelihoods of the farmers through additional income because of uh, the implementation of good agricultural practices and also the incentives or the premiums that, that they get from the certified product they, that they sell to our uh, uh, company. And out of this, uh, we are helping the farmers to improve their livelihoods. That is one goal of our uh, corporate strategies, which is the farmer prosperity. And number two is uh, we are helping the environment to uh, to thrive uh, because we practice uh, the standard, the Rainforest Alliance standard in compliance to uh, uh, biodiversity and natural resource conservation. So I think that's a short introduction of my organization. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that, um, Bing. So our next speaker is also a woman who is a licensed agriculture and biosystems engineer by profession. So Ms. Pamela 
Pamela Castro or Pamela Castro is a program manager of Filipina Shell Foundation Incorporated. Uh, she is currently in charge of the foundation's agriculture and food security programs, including Shell's three training farms. She also specializes in program development, uh, management, and capacity building, having handled sustainable development programs for uh, the foundation and capacity building and social responsibility evaluation studies for corporate clients. With that, the mic is yours, Ms. Pam. Uh, thank you, BJ, for the introduction. Uh, good, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Pam Castro, and uh, I'm handling uh, the Agriculture and Food Security Programs of Filipina Shell Foundation. For uh, uh, the audience right now um, who are watching, Filipina Shell Foundation is the social development arm of the shell companies in the Philippines, and we uh, were established in 1982. So um, we have been into so several programs along the themes of livelihood, uh, nutrition, uh, food security, health, uh, environment, uh, and energy, uh, basically because Shell is an energy company. So um, our involvement in, um, in, uh, with the coconut farmers started in 2019, and uh, we implemented the program that we called Project Coconut, which is uh, uh, short for uh, collaboration for coconut productivity and uh, nurturing farmers trade. So this is essentially a program that we're, we are currently implementing in Quezon province in uh, four municipalities. Um, as you all know, Quezon is one of the, one of the major uh, suppliers and producers of coconut in the country. So seeing the need of the coconut farmers as uh, previously mentioned by, uh, by uh, EPSA, so, uh, so we, we somehow thought of uh, introducing a program that could, uh, number one, uh, increase the quality of um, uh, copra and, and supply in the Philippines. And second is improvement in quality of the lives of the coconut farmers by uh, introducing several interventions that will uh, eventually uh, result to increases in their uh, income. So uh, what, what we essentially did was uh, we had focus training on uh, farmer supply base so as to help uh, improve the agriculture and farm management practices of the farmers. And uh, of course, we also developed uh, the capacities of the farmers, specifically farm cooperatives that uh, will enable them to deal directly with the milling or processing uh, companies. Uh, and somehow by doing that, we are able to reduce or shorten the supply chain and cutting uh, the intermediate uh, traders uh, uh, in the process. So uh, essentially what we did, you know, right now we are still uh, doing several of uh, the interventions along those lines, providing alternative livelihood, uh, upgrading the quality of the coconuts. You know? We have partnered with the Philippine Coconut Authority and we have another industry partner who is a major player in this partnership. So the farmer engagement and the training that uh, we have been providing is somehow uh, geared towards promoting uh, sustainable production, uh, building knowledge, and eventually creating beneficial uh, value chain partnerships. So uh, right now we are still on our, we are on our third year in uh, in the project implementation, and we hope to uh, somehow uh, continue after 2021. Back to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, po, uh, Ms. Pam. So, our next speaker is Sinon Chai, the owner of a company called the Coconut. Uh, Sinon grew, grew up in Kampot province in Cambodia, where he became interested in coconuts and founded his uh, coconut company focusing on oil production back in 2014. Uh, with that, I'm now giving the mic to uh, Sinon. Yeah, hi everybody. So, it's an entire from Cambodia. It's the no, it's a, Cambodia. So, this is our company. We focus on uh, oil production. So, in the region, coconut oil. So, we, yeah, it, it is this is small in, uh, in our industry here. So, we have been, um, yeah, encouraging. We, Part of the resource that we have is from the farmers that are living in 
um, in our area. So the reason why that we do, we trying to increase um, and helping uh, the people that live in the villages here. I think I don't have much to uh, to talk with. It's, it's still small, um, you know. All right, I think uh, Sinan is uh, done with um, his introduction. So for our uh, last but definitely not the least speaker is uh, Jonathan Cuba, who began his career as an attorney in the United States and then moved to Asia to become in-house counsel for a venture capital fund. Um, after going back to school for his MBA, Mr. Cuba began an investment fund with uh, partners to bring food and beverages uh, from the U.S. to Vietnam. Um, after successfully exiting his investments in uh, Vietnam and seeing an opportunity to do coconut uh, processing in Cambodia, Jonathan moved to Phnom Penh and founded Indochina Agriculture Processing and started his third career in the food production as a coconut farmer. Welcome to the session. Over to you, Jonathan. Thank you, Vijay. Um, we are uh, at Indochina Agriculture where primarily a uh, processing company, but haven't started processing yet. Um, the reason is that uh, when we looked at the uh, coconut value chain in Vietnam, uh, we realized that the processors there had uh, a big issue with regard to variability of their input costs. And so what we wanted to do was grow our own coconuts so that we wouldn't have any difficulty with input costs when we started processing. So. Up till now, for about eight years, we've we've simply been growers and growing our own uh, coconuts. So, hopefully, by the end of this year, we'll have our first uh, crop of coconuts. And so, right now, we're looking for uh, offtake partners so that we can set up our processing facility to meet uh, specific offtake uh, needs with regard to uh, buyers. Um, it, it seems like the uh, coconut. Uh, industry here is not as big as, as the Philippines. So, you know, obviously we'd, we'd love to partner with other bigger markets such as the Philippines or, or Vietnam. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jonathan. So now that we learned that our speakers, well, came from diverse parts and uh, operations along the value chain, the discussion for this afternoon will, I think, will be exciting. And... Uh, we are inviting our speakers for a panel discussion, which will be moderated by Rata Chan of CPSA, and after which we will accommodate some questions from our participants. So Rata, they are all yours. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Vijay. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, the panelists. Uh, so actually, uh, we, we prepared a question, but hearing from very, very diverse and, 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 and innovative company, I come up with the different question. So uh, I will call uh, the panelists uh, with, with this question. So uh, don't be surprised, it will be different question uh, because based on the hearing from the uh, army and, and the panelists, I, I'm passionate about other question. So number one, uh, the question, uh, uh, I will call for a, a radical kitchen or Kagol Philippine uh, to answer how you can secure the um, a sustainable uh, uh, coconut value chain given the uh, 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 status, uh, like Amy mentioned, low productivity, low income. So it's, it's a lot of challenges for the smallholder to, to continue in doing the farming, coconut farming. So how you secure that supply chain? Because it's important for, for your uh, uh, secure the, the smallholder farmer who, who continue to supply. Otherwise, you, you have a problem. So, so given these uh, 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 challenges, how do you uh, company uh, or, or your project uh, cope with this issue? I will go for uh, uh, Jose or, or, or uh, Ms. Bing to, to, to uh, give the perspective on, on this uh, question. Yeah, please. Ladies first. Lady first, yes, yes, nice. Sure, <laughs> so I'll take the lead. <laughs> okay, so good afternoon. So regarding that uh, question, I think uh, uh, 
because we have this uh, current uh, sustainability program, as mentioned earlier, and the main uh, objective of this uh, program that we have in Cargill is farmers' prosperity. So how do we do this, uh, this uh, implementation of our activities in the farm? So number one is uh, we are teaching farmers. We have a curriculum. We call that the farming as a business a curriculum where we are teaching the farmers on good agricultural practices. And uh, I want to, to highlight what Rata has mentioned. Actually, this is very uh, challenging because she mentioned that in uh, Cambodia, okay, for one to two hectares plot of land, there are only 20 to 40 coconut trees. Yeah, that is what I read in your slide. So that is quite challenging because the standard for uh, coconut planting for every hectare is actually uh, ranging from 100 to 150 trees. Yeah. So that is uh, the, the practice here in Philippines wherein our coconut farmers can yield uh, around uh, 2,500 nuts per harvest, which is uh, uh, every quarter. So that that uh, area, I think, is uh, uh, one thing that we need to reconsider if uh, we want to we want to achieve uh, higher yield and, of course, impact the productivity of the farm. Number two is uh, we are teaching them on um, good uh, modern farming practices, and uh, we have also introduced some technology in the drying of uh, coconut meat to become copra. So uh, that, that, will il that will also impact uh, the efficiency of the farmers in terms of uh, copra production. And number three is uh, we are uh, helping them in capacity building because we believe that uh, if the farmers are org organized, they have the strength. And also they have this uh, capacity to market their products because of this organization. And we are also uh, looking for possible consolidators uh, from the farmers to be the representative of these uh, clustered groups. So in that way, they are, uh, they are um, having the capacity, the ability to deliver their uh, harvest to us because of this uh, organization. So I think uh, in terms of uh, impacting productivity, we need to revisit the technology and innovation in coconut farming and of course learn a good agricultural practices and uh, also the sustainable sourcing practices that promotes farmers' prosperity. So I think that's uh, all from me, uh, Rata. Okay. Um, on our side, uh, the, the, the primary objective really of the company is one, is to uh, first, as I said, uh, increase the income of the farmers, a sustainable income of the farmers. Uh, exactly what was said earlier, uh, coconut farmers of the Philippines are one of the poorest farmers even though they have actually a big portion of the export market. So what we are doing as a company is we're trying to change that by providing added value to the actual farmers themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, I can say that some of, some, uh, a number of the farmers already are earning around 15 to 20,000 pesos a month. So it's, you know, it, uh, relatively, it's quite high already. Uh, uh, it's way above minimum wage already for the Philippine uh, econ uh, you know, market. So what we have done basically is trying to uh, teach the farmers uh, go down so that they add value to uh, for, for on the harvest. So that's the first one. The second one is we've tried to group them already. So now uh, we've already done our first one. There's already an association of uh, coconut tappers uh, and they are now fair trade certified. So uh, it's the very first in the country uh, and it's a, it's a regional association. So uh, that's what we've done. So what, I'm, what we're looking at is duplicating what we've done in uh, the General Santos, Soxagen area to now we're looking at Quezon and at actually Bicol area to, uh, to expand uh, what we're doing. So 
uh, we're doing that. And then the third one is actually look at the products that we produce. So instead of just selling raw materials to, uh, to the export market, we are now already developing products that will go retail, that can go uh, direct to the shelf uh, comp uh, so that there's value from the farmers to the actual uh, export of, of the product. So there's a value already right across. And what we do is we share the, the value right across the different people involved in the, uh, uh, in the supply chain. Thank you. Wow, uh, uh, nice, nice. Both really, really give to, straight to the point and really great. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next question, I will we'll look at the innovation. Uh, how the innovation or new technology could be uh, introduced in this uh, sector that, that could uh, give a value added? Because, you know, coconut you can use from leaf, from root, from fruit, uh, just from cell. So, so I would call for a, a cocoa pellet. I think the uh, Mikhail or, 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 or uh, the representative from Cocoa Palette could, could give us some, some perspective on the, how technology could support the sector, more competitive, more uh, uh, generates more income for smaller farmers. farmer. Yeah, please, sure. please. yeah. Okay, um, my line gets uh, disconnected because I'm in Amsterdam right now. I don't know, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, well, Cocoa Pellet is a, is a circular company. So we have, uh, we strive to have no waste in the whole system. So we use everything of the, of the coconut. And of course, it's a very interesting tree because everything can be used. And we have use for the husk. So the, uh, the, usually the farmers sell the coconut to the, the factories and the processors. And now they can also sell the husk because we can make like a kind of MDF particle board without any additional uh, resin. So we use the, the core pit, which is rich in lignin. So if you have wood, you have cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose. And we have a trick to activate it as a glue. So we can make, uh, in our case, uh, export pellets to replace wooden pellets, which is a massive need in, uh, in Asia. And uh, so we created the business model that we uh, buy coconut husks from the pharma cooperatives and start like innovating. The first product we make is a pellet, but the next things would be local building materials like panels or uh, roof sheeting, anything like that. So it's quite innovative. It's also um, quite an investment to build factories like this. But uh, we believe that in the circular economy, we uh, can solve a lot of problems uh, because you, know, you buy the stuff from the farmer so they don't burn it, um, extra income. At the end, it's purely organic. So the, the receiving end of the coke pellets, like in America or Europe, you can just mill it down and use it as, um, as a soil improver. So there's an extra value at the end of it. So this is how we can uh, create a pool from this uh, for our products. So it's all about innovation, but I think there's a lot more innovation possible in the coconut supply chain. For example, if you look at mattresses, made, like everybody needs a mattress. Most people sleep on a polyurethane memory foam mattress uh, that's a big market you know um, so if the problem is big enough then there might be some business in there if you work together but i think the strength of the coconut uh, industry is like working together especially farmers and cooperatives because one farmer alone doesn't have so much to say but um, hundred farmers in the cooperative and maybe hundred cooperatives together have a say and also maybe can attract finance so they can own the production methods like the, a truck or a milling machine or like a compressing thing. Um, so the, the, the research we conducted, especially in the Philippines, showed that especially the farm cooperatives, the problem is that they have no access to finance. That was the hardest thing. But if you have a good plan and you have like a contract that guarantees the buying of the coconuts and the, and the husk and the shell, then um, it would be easier to combine this in clusters and it's very bankable, we believe. And uh, so it, it's, it's not only innovation, but it's also how make innovation possible. And it's also by financing it. And this is how we, we see it. And it can 
be very different per country. We don't know the situation in Cambodia. And we see that's like in the APCC statistics, I just looked it up. It's like 70 million coconuts in 2017. Well, compared with the Philippines, I think it's about 15, 16 billion coconuts. It's quite a difference. Um, so for us, building a factory in the Cambodia, not for pellets probably, but it's very much possible to make like building materials for local use. I hope I answered your, your question. Yes, it's more than more than enough, more than enough. Uh, but yes, just and we're happy to share the data and reports about who, how to do things. You know, we uh, we're an impact company. We're for profit, mm -hmm. so we can scale. So we want to, as Kel mentioned, build several mm -hmm. factories in Asia. But if you, if somebody says like, hey, how to make uh, local panels? We're happy to share the reports that we have uh, mm -hmm. about the, the things to do, especially things not to do. Because uh, uh, it's no rocket science, but it's not not not, not an easy thing. Mm. Yeah, actually, I want to ask the next question, but you are already answer. You are happy oh, to share. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> it, you're happy to share and happy to to uh, uh, share with the, with other uh, 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 country, other company to replicate that. So it's, yeah, it's just connect to to Kel or to me uh, via LinkedIn or send us an email, and uh, and we can see what we can do. Yeah. Right. Nice. Nice. The I think the the uh, other the husband already noted. So I will go to the next uh, panelist uh, uh, for Jonathan. Uh, it's from the and from the lawyer in, in US uh, and and come to uh, rural area in Cambodia and growing uh, coconut. Why 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 you interesting in coconut farm? It, it it imagine you sit down in a in the aircon in, in US, why do you need to make yourself hard in, in Cam rural Cambodia? What's going on? What is your thinking? Yeah, yeah, good please. question. That's what my mom said. <laughs> Are you crazy? Uh, well, you know, when, when I decided to move to Cambodia to pursue uh, coconut processing, there were two trends that, that mainly stuck out in my mind. Uh, one was the fact that there was this boom in coconut water. Um, I guess the worldwide uh, popularity of yoga made coconut drink, co coconut water drinking very popular, and and also, um, you know the the decline in the number of of uh, coconut trees in or in, in other words the the maturity of of you know plantations, uh, both of those trends would lead to a discrepancy in the supply and demand for mature coconuts. Um, and there are many uh, uh, value-added products, as you know, that are made from, from mature coconuts. So uh, looking at Cambodia, Cambodia has a lot of coconuts, but no real processor uh, for coconuts. And, and that's where we saw that there's an opportunity to do that. Um, of course, the other hand, the other problem is that we don't have a robust industry here in Cambodia, um, much like uh, in, in opposite to the Philippines. So we have a lot to learn, I, I think, from the industry in the Philippines and try to evolve so that we can get to that point where there are a lot of uh, value-added businesses that can work together here. So that, that's, you know, uh, that's the opportunity that, that we saw here in, in Cambodia for coconut. Thank you, thank you. So. Um... Jonathan really need a partner to 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 move to the next level. So uh, I think the, if uh, any uh, uh, ones here uh, or your network could could find a partner, it it could be uh, a, a chance for, for for further discussion. So I I only have one more question. Um, uh, uh, so uh, random selection. So in any production or final product uh, you need to market right so mm -hmm. is it difficult is it demanded for final product from coconut market market for the coconut product like shampoo or, or, or cookie is it the market the world demand is there for for that product is it worth for pursuing this business coconut processing and process the final product so mm -hmm. Uh, Jose or, or, or Pamela, or, 
Yeah. Do you want to take this? Yes, uh, Ratha. Yeah. yeah, this is uh, Pam, Pamela from the uh, Digital Foundation. Um, yeah, um, in terms of market, I think uh, one of the uh, basic considerations when we do our interventions is making sure that uh, our farmers have a market you know, for their products. And uh, in our case, uh, our farmers produce uh, copra, which is a primary ingredient for biodiesel. And as you all know, uh, Shell is into uh, the energy sector. So somehow there will, there will always be a connect or a connection in terms of uh, the market. So what is uh, very good about the partnerships that we have on the ground is that we partnered with uh, a milling processing company that who buys uh, the copra and somehow processes it. And, uh, uh, and that company partner somehow ensures that uh, there will be sustainable procurement uh, of, of uh, the copra produced by our coconut farmers for as long as uh, uh, the farmers produce uh, the copra that is within the quality needed by this company. So, so uh, in, in such a way that um, there will be sustainable production. So that's the reason why we've introduced several interventions, several uh, uh, sessions, training sessions for the farmers, specifically on uh, copra quality processing and, and then some are producing a high, uh, uh, high value coconuts uh, that can produce better copra than the traditional ones. So those are some considerations. And in terms of the other markets right now, um, in addition to the innovations that were previously mentioned, uh, we are also, uh, because coconut really is an industry that uh, somehow uh, thrives uh, on a per cycle basis. So in between that cycle, we somehow try to introduce uh, products, you know, uh, training to those cooperatives uh, in such a way that they can produce byproducts for additional income sources. But uh, it's not just training. We make sure we made sure that there is a market for the products that uh, they will be producing. So, uh, for instance, one of the products that they produce is cocoa beads or cocoa jewelry, uh, which we partnered uh, with um, with an exporter of uh, cocoa jewelry of or coconut beads. So that somehow uh, answer the question of whether they have a market or not. And uh, currently, we're also uh, coordinating with the Department of Trade and Industry uh, here in the country for them to uh, venture into other coconut byproducts, and um, well, uh, which which somehow will uh, earn them or earn the farmers more income. So it's actually a combination of uh, a combination of having also people or partners on the ground who will do it uh, from our end uh, on our behalf. Uh, amidst the COVID situation. And second is making sure that there are markets for the products uh, that they produce. So somehow these are um, the major considerations that uh, we have as far as uh, the coconut byproducts on, uh, as are concerned. Well, actually uh, our, our industry partner on the ground also produce uh, RBD products. Now, by, by that, I mean refined, uh, bleach and deodorized products, so that those products have something to do with uh, household consumption products like uh, oil, uh, baking products, uh, dairy, butter, coconut oil, and so on and so forth. So in some ways, uh, this somehow stabilizes the supply uh, that the farmers, uh, the, the, uh, that the farmers can provide them and, and, and um, somehow they are a sure market already. So th those partnerships are very important uh, as far as our uh, project is concerned. Aratha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did, um, did I answer your question? Yeah, really good. Uh, any uh, more comment on this market access uh, before we go into the uh, uh, open question from the audience? Yes, I have a question. It's Michiel from Coco Pellet. Um, yeah. Pamela. Yeah. The prices of coconut diesel, is that competitive with regular diesel? And can we operate our trucks and, um, and or 
uh, or land cruisers with it, or only the old type of, of engines? Um, yeah, uh, Kiel, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's, I cannot answer your question because somehow uh, my, my, my uh, responsibility is up to only connecting them to our industry partner uh, who uh -huh. buys. Uh, but, but as far as the quality is concerned, I think it's between the business already and, and I mean the shell business already and, and, and our industry partner who determines the quality and the type of uh, product they produce for the diesel that is needed by the company okay. for it to be av yeah. available for consumers. Yeah, uh, Kiel, Kiel. Kiel, I might be able to add a little bit. The, uh, the coconut uh, oil that is being used for the diesel is an additive that is added to the actual diesel itself. Yeah. Currently, right. Right, so it's not running on pure coconut uh, product. Yes. So that's, I think, what was Kiel was asking. Can you run the trucks with it? You cannot. Right now, I think there is about a 3% requirement, uh, and they're lobbying to actually increase that to about yes. 5%, I think. Yes, with, yes. With the percentage of uh, biodiesel as part of the... Uh, uh, you know, the regular diesel that you, that you get. So your truck will not run on pure coconut oil. Yeah. Well, um, th th that's because it would be nice <laughs> to have a sticker on the truck, like powered by coconut diesel, because uh, it's like uh, sustainable, yeah. low emissions. Yeah, that probably can be done. But right now, the I think uh, by law, uh, diesel is being sold in the Philippines with 3% uh, coconut yes. oil. Yeah, yeah. So like, that's where well, that's if somebody where can solve this problem yeah. for us uh, of course it's more as it is it's like a bit different but you know alfred diesel did develop the diesel so that every farmer could grow their own fuel and so it must be possible but maybe for the older types it may of be possible it may be possible the other thing also Kiel, what i while i was listening to you earlier one of the things that you can probably look at is uh with your coconut husk develop it with a, a fiber cement board. I used to work with James Hardy, and that is one of the uh, um, key products that we produce, you know, um, a fiber cement board. So it's uh, wood fibers with cement. So you might be able to use uh, uh, coconut, you know, uh, husks or whatever to actually use that. And they, you, you use that for panels, for- uh, Yeah, true. And it's, 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 it's rather cheap and it's, uh, it's also fire retardant. So it's a very good for, for low cost building materials. True. Yes, yes. So that, you know, so that's the one. It's a fiber cement board. That's a, it's, a, it's quite big. And in the Philippines, that's already very big. It has replaced uh, some of the plywood products in the Philippines already, okay. the fiber cement boards. Well, I think especially for people that live on remote areas like islands, the um, to make your own building materials from local waste streams is very interesting because you don't have this high uh, logistic cost of bringing the materials there. You make it yourself. So you keep the money in your own economy. And uh, so, so this is something that will be stage two of our project after the pellets, when we have some, some more cash uh, and uh, the knowledge. To, to, to co-develop building materials. So uh, anyone who is interested, just, just connect with us. That's something that, that we yeah. desire to do very much. Yeah. Thank you, thank, 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 uh, Jose, and thank you. I, I, I missed one uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Sinun. Um, so uh, by hearing the, the all other panelists, uh, how innovative this, uh, what you added to this uh, 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 product, so what is you are, you are looking for in terms of, because you, are, you, you do a, a oil processing, a coconut oil processing. So mm -hmm. what are you doing and why are you doing and what are you looking for? Because you can hear that from, from coconut oil can come to hundreds hundred of, of different products. Yeah. This is enough. So, okay. um yeah, I think uh, it's been it is it's been like it's blown my mind as well to uh, you know to see like so many companies and so many uh, people that are working on the coconut here. And um, for us right now, is the the coconut is our company standing by, and uh, we try to increase our production as well. Last time we have a partnership in uh, you know like with Coco Kumai, and we have been producing a lot too like. Jonathan will be like, you know, we have a plantation as well. We, we're looking for, you know, more coconut as well. 
it's, it's quite a way for us to, um, you know, try to work in here. And um, I can, you know, we openly to, uh, yeah, to get more partnership as well, even the outside or inside uh, mm-hmm. in Cambodia, because right now we try to increase a lot um, by our brand. So right now it's just like a finished group product that we have. We have our brand. Last time we have only the wholesale, but right now we running on you know retail as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's quite a good life for everybody like, and you know to learning from mm-hmm. everyone. Okay. Thank 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 you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sinun. So uh why uh This uh, final question, I will pass the floor to VJ and Amy for the uh, uh, open Q&A session. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. VJ, can Thank I you so much. <laughs> yes, sir. Go, Amy. Okay, so we'll proceed to the moderated question and answer, and we will hear from our um, participants. So before I call on maybe two or three participants, um, we'll just read um, a few questions um, on the Q&A box. So maybe that was um, briefly or in a surface answer earlier, but uh, there's a question on um, value chain is really good for farmers if this benefits the farmers. Why is the price of coconut matured and copra remain, uh, remains dependent on traditional crude coconut oil when many companies are doing higher value processing? which has higher market value than CNO. Any taker from our panelists? Any brave soul to, to answer the first um, Q&A question? Sir Joey, are you brave enough? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You, want, you might have uh, some inputs on this um, question. None? Anyone from the, uh, the team? So if none, hey, I'll me. Ah, yes, I would like you. to just uh, give uh, inputs on that. Okay, uh, first is uh, we, we need to see the market demand for VCO and also uh, for crude coconut oil. So currently in the Philippines, uh, this is uh, the stats from uh, PCA, the higher uh, share of uh, the coconut industry goes to crude coconut oil and uh, others are going into different uh, streams for the price of uh, copra be it uh, mature or uh, mature nut whole nut or copra itself it is dependent on uh, the world market price also of crude coconut oil so uh, in our case uh, we we are dependent on that it is not uh, regulated by uh, private companies it is not regulated by pca but it is dependent on the world price of uh, uh, especially for uh, premium vegetable oils and in the case of vco because uh, that is a different process and the intended use for vco is uh, Uh, of course, we know it can be for for care, nutrition, and also for uh, direct consumption. So uh, we, we'll just consider on uh, the 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 market share and uh, of course the uh, the uh, intended use of uh, these products. So yeah. Thank um, you, thank you for that. Um, I have yes, a question Michelle? about this. This is uh, Michiel from Coco Pellet. Um, we understand that. The demand for coconut has gone up massively the last 10 years, and the prices per coconut have gone down almost 50% in some areas. Uh, so the farmers are not getting paid enough. And we keep telling, like, we have to pay a fair price to the farmers. But then people say, yeah, but the, the prices of the oil are low because it's coupled with palm oil, for example. Uh, is this true? And if so, can we break this bond? So the price of coconut oil is coconut oil, and palm oil, soy oil, whatever, it's like the something else. Because it's quite toxic that um, if something happens in the palm oil industry, which is a completely different thing, it, it's uh, the coconut farmers suffer. Is there something we can do together with um, to separate this? 
Um, sorry, uh, thank you, Michael. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, Chris. Christopher Eleven of Cargill. I think you you gave a clear answer in the last discussion about about this. Would you like to share it to the um, to the panelists and also our attendees, or if you're there, or Miss Bing, would you like to add to your insights earlier? Ms. Bing. Uh, okay. So what we... Uh, actually, this is uh, the real uh, scenario here in our country because uh, we, uh, we know that uh, the coconut farmers are... Uh, they belong to uh, the poorest of the poor. So if we don't do something, I think this will, uh, this will continue. But... Uh, in the case of uh, our uh, our uh, uh, endeavors for Cargill, we we have this uh, program, as I mentioned, that uh, we are helping the coconut farmers to at least augment in their income by introducing our sustainability project. So, uh, what what are the benefits that the farmers get from this uh, program that we have? Uh, we incentivize. Uh, the, the produce coming from their farms. So it means it's a premium price. So that is uh, one thing that uh, we are doing now as part of our, uh, um, as our uh, project here in Cargill. And uh, also I think PCA has already included in the roadmap uh, about this, uh, this improvement that they will uh, set on the ground to help and support these uh, coconut farmers. Thank you. Uh, Mikkel, uh, were we able to respond to your question? Mikkel? Well, I think that we really have to uh, make it, put it on the agenda every time that we have to, to fix this, because as long as this one is not tackled and, and, and solved, the problem stays and even gets worse. And the thing is that if farming is not interesting because they don't, cannot make a decent living they will stop farming and then we all have a problem and i think that the awareness of we have to pay the bottom of the pyramid the, the farmers a fair price no matter what they produce uh, is very important and to put this in on the agenda because if we don't make farming attractive the second the next generation will not continue farming they will go to the cities and the, the land will be empty and there will be no food. It's simple as that. And so I think it's an important task for all of us to, to, to think about this and, and to put it on the agenda to everyone we talk to, the big corporations, like, um, because it's very important. Um, thank you, Michael. I think uh, just to add that um, there, are, as mentioned during the presentation earlier, um, there are um, collaborations or movements done by, for example, private companies to elevate the dignity of um, the farming as a profession and, of course, entice also the youth and um, other companies to put their investments into farming. So um, there are ongoing discussions related to that. And um, the companies are working together, um, together um, including, of course, Cargill and Shell. They are also um, part of uh, parts of their, those, that movement where companies would like to learn from one another and um, they have dialogues with the government to further push for more programs and policy recommendations related to, to that. So um, I think they, they, um, it's quite a hopeful um, landscape where people are really, um, even organizations are working together um, to address that. So uh, thank you for that. And I'm, I'm sure Ms. Bing also mentioned that they provide incentives to um, farmers uh, apart or beyond the, the price of the coconut. So that also attracts the um, they, there's a price premium that uh, is provided to their um, farmer partners to further attract them to to farm. So other other inputs from the panelists, or I'll move on to the to calling some of our um, um, audience or participants. Um, to our participants, uh, I've seen that uh, your questions are already answered by our panelists through the Q&A box. So I'll move on to those who are raising their hand. So um, may I call on, of course, ladies first, Ms. Georgie. Um, can you 
are you okay to unmute your mic or should we maybe help you? Miss uh, Felicitas Pantoja. Okay. Can you yeah. hear? Yes, yes. ma'am. Good um, afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, um, if okay to share your um, name and of course your um, organization so that for the knowledge of our panelists and our attendees. Okay. I'm Joji Pantoja. I I work with Coffee for Peace. And recently I have uh, conducted a training on values formation with some coconut farmers in Mindanao. And listening to their stories, I have gathered that they are not yet happy with what they are earning from their coconut. Sometimes it's just focus on the coconut, like the nut itself and value addition is very limited. So I'm wondering what else, or are your organizations present in, in the Davao del Sur area, wherein you can help these coconut farmers? One thing that I've noticed being focused on coffee myself, we are, uh, we are diversifying and integrating coffee plant to coconut so that it would have an additional income for the farmers. And we have shared this to some of the coconut farmers because you could integrate other crops within your coconut so that it would uh, give them extra income. Are these being done already or are there anything that the panelists could enlighten us on this? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Joji. Uh, anyone from the panel from the Philippines? Hi, Ma'am Joji. <laughs> Okay, I would like to, to give uh, inputs on that. Uh, currently, uh, we are collaborating with uh, the Philippine Coconut Authority. Uh, this is in terms of uh, projects on uh, hybridization, uh, replanting, and the intercropping. So, uh, because we want to, to have the, the farms, uh, um, to have the farms to uh, adapt uh, diversification as well yeah. and uh, also we are collaborating with DTI because DTI is uh, into the rapid growth uh, that involves uh, coffee banana and uh, also coconut so they are introducing this uh, these uh, coconut producers into industries that can cater their uh, products so for us we are being introduced to uh, copra producers and at the same time working with PCA so this is a working group technical working group which is consisting uh, private partners DTI and also PCA so the role of PCA is to identify farms which are uh, having uh, senile trees and uh, from that assessment they will be providing uh, additional farm inputs uh, just to uh, just to augment those uh, trees which are already uh, senile and of course uh, they are also introducing um, a hybridization so how we know that hybrids uh, produce higher yields so if the farm has the opportunity to plant uh, more trees that is uh, where we introduce uh, these hybrids so it's uh, it's a long term project uh, that we are uh, coordinating with the PCA and this rapid growth I think will also help uh, coffee producers uh, to diversify their farms and uh, of course uh, to find the linkage to uh, market. Thank you Ms. Bing. Uh, Ms. Joji, I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I call on Nari? Nari U? Um, can you unmute your mic, please? I think you're raising your hand. Yes, sorry. Hi, yes. can you see me? Yes, clearly, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Nari from uh, Soma Group. Um, uh, it's a local corporate and we have diversified industries including Soma Farm. Um, Soma Farm uh, was a family business initially and then we focused on a lot of different products including um, eggs uh, production, uh, beef, and also coconut and orchid flowers. And or uh, coconut is one of our uh, newest uh, project that we're trying to, um, 
to develop starting this year. So this is very like, I'm really happy to, to see this, uh, this panel today. Um, we would like to uh, develop the ecosystem uh, to participate in developing the ecosystem for agriculture, including for the coconut industry. And we do like expertise uh, within our group. Um, we, uh, we would like to, to develop the agro-processing and also sustainable packaging. And therefore we want to improve our system. Uh, and we also like uh, investment. So all of this thrown, um, I just uh, would like to, to say that uh, we are, um, we would be interested to connect with uh, more companies and uh, discuss more afterwards uh, following this, this panel. And my question today is, uh, could um, someone from the Philippines, I guess, because you guys are doing a great job with the, in the coconut uh, sectors, uh, in terms of uh, logistics, uh, do you use any uh, type of like sustainable, um, how do you connect your farmers to the cities, basically? Um, any takers from the Philippines? Um, hi. Miss Pam, hi. yes ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, it, in, in the province where we're working uh, right now, uh, it's it's some it's a combination of mountainous area and relatively sloping lands where uh, the coconut trees are planted, and in that case, uh, logistics support that the most uh, of our farmers are asking are horses, and uh, because uh, they see it as the only means, uh, they uh, there are no roads uh, uphill, so uh, somehow the horses are the beasts of burden as far as uh, transferring their produce from the mountains down to a relatively flat area within within the municipalities but uh, the one thing that we uh, invested into is uh, creating coconut hubs wherein uh, from the mountains that's where uh, all the coconut uh, supplies coming from uh, the mountains are are carried to are uh, somehow brought to so the coconut hubs serve as a center, uh, the central repository of all the harvests for, uh, for the municipalities that we are working with. But of course, uh, from the municipality down to the producer themselves, of course, logistics, uh, it's uh, care of uh, the partnership that we had with the, uh, the producer themselves, uh, the, the miller themselves who provide the logistical support uh, to the farmers. Uh, because uh, again, uh, this this uh, coconut partner, a producer that we have, is uh, also investing in this project. They are partly implementing. They have manpower in the ground, doing also uh, a lot of work you know, with the part with the coconut farmers, uh, apart from our own uh, people also. So somehow they are a big help. So the logistics is carried all, all on by the company who who buy. Uh, who, who buy their materials from the coconut cocoa hubs and then somehow transport it to their own uh, milling or, or the factories. But uh, from the mountains downwards, uh, they use horses. So that's how uh, uh, we use it you know, in, in uh, the areas where we work in Quezon. Uh, does that answer your, que uh, your question? Yes, it's, a, it's actually very interesting and I'm very surprised about your answer, but... Uh... Yeah, 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 because that's uh, somehow uh, those are the problems that we encountered before. Most of the requests are really for horses. I, I, I mean, animals that can help them transfer, uh, hold or transport rather the the coconuts from uh, from their places up uh, and, and down to the cocoa hubs. I see. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. We Any more additional on, on this uh, on. Connecting the farmers with the cities is, of course, the wheels and legs in the case of horses, but also yes. it's about uh, uh, communications and so by mobile phone, email, or whatever, yeah. you know, systems. Yeah. And I think that we see, especially in East Africa, developments that connect small farmers, uh, cooperatives with the, the market, which really empowers the, the, uh, the base. And... We were working with, with some companies that, uh, that have developed this and very primitive solutions in, in rural Africa. It could be very applicable in Cambodia and the Philippines too. 
So this is like, um, so that you know, what's the market price? What's the demand? Uh, where to bring it to? What's, and also quality control mechanism. So you can couple quantity and quality uh, in paying the farmers. So this is something I think it's also very important to, uh, to look at instead of only logistics. Sure. Thank you. Uh, actually, um, it's true. We don't have a lot of... Uh, the idea would be to have a logistics slash quality control on the way, but that's like sustainable and mixing with the, like uh, IT. I'm just brainstorming. <laughs> IT and stuff. Yeah. And, and <laughs> IT sets you free. So it's really like... Uh, with this high tech and near infrared, uh, all the like high tech things, you can make things life a lot easier because uh, it's not that difficult if you borrow it from other value chains. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have uh, time for a last um, question from the uh, attendees or the audience. Anyone? Yes, uh, Sir Roy Ribo, you're raising your hand. Can you unmute your mic, sir? Please uh, state your uh, organization, please. Thank you. Sir Roy? Yeah, good yes. afternoon. Can you hear me? Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, my name is uh, Roy Ribo. Uh, I am the manager of a uh, small co cooperative here in Leyte, Philippines. Uh, we are doing integrated coconut processing. Uh, to help our small coconut farmers. Uh, we established this uh, after Typhoon Haiyan to build back better, no? so that farmers will not rely on copra production only. So uh, if you could imagine Franklin Baker can produce how much? Is it 2 million nuts a day? Ours is only 2,000 nuts a day. No? Uh, but it's not enough. My question is, there are efforts uh, done by uh, coconut farmers in in some areas, uh, particularly here in Leyte. We have also organizations in Mindanao uh, doing integrated processing, but uh, somehow we get we get stumbled when the when the price because basically you enter into a business in order for your members to have a better price to have an increase of their income. But uh, almost uh, every time that we could produce uh, such product like here, we, we produce desiccated coconut, we have coconut uh, vinegar, we have uh, the shells, we have uh, uh, husk, uh, cocoa peat, fiber, but it's always the market, no? Uh, that's why I agree with the challenge that was presented earlier from the Philippine side, no? So, uh, how, how do we help no, the farmers? They have their effort doing uh, innovations, but somehow they get blocked no, because of the price, uh, the market price, no, the vulnerability of the price. And uh, yeah, and I, I believe there should be, uh, I also agree with uh, uh, Michel, uh, Michael, Mike, Mike Michel's point that there should be, a, a, a breaking of the bond between the crude coconut oil and the palm oil. Just imagine if you're a company that produces biodiesel. So you have a higher value, but you, you buy copra on the same amount that a CNO producer is buying, but you are doing a higher value than the CNO. No? So I think that there's, there's an unfair, uh, you know, system here that we would like to fix also. If you go into VCO, you buy whole nut, but you, the whole nut that you buy is also uh, dependent on the price of copra divided by four. No, So that's the price of the nut. Even if you have premium because this comes, uh, this is produced by uh, organic, uh, certified organic uh, plantations, but still it, it, it is, it, it is, I, I don't know how, how we could find solutions on this. And I think there should be a discussion on how to decouple no? this uh, palm oil or other substitute of uh, coconut oil. 
Um, thank you, Sir Roy. We, we totally understand that and we really heavily hear that during our consultation sessions. Um, does anyone from the panelists um, have a response to that? Um, but for, for, for us in PPSA, we, we, we really think that um, in this concern, it needs a lar li larger scale approach or um, response, like a sectoral intervention, wherein the government should really play a big role in, um, like, of course, um, pushing for the programs that they, they are um, proposing, for example, clustering, capability building, um, um, technical assistance, among others, and of course, pushing for investments. But of course, the, the companies here are more knowledgeable on, on this area. So if you may share your insights, and we in PPSA will be happy to document this and of course, include this in our discussions with the government agencies. Anyone from um, the panelists? Any takers? Uh, so I guess uh, none, So, but Sir Rohi, um, don't worry, but uh, we are really taking note of this. We have um, ongoing discussions with several other companies and also agencies, and uh, we are recording this webinar just to ensure that we capture your um, insights and that we relay them really accurately to those uh, concerned um, agencies and institutions. So you may also reach out to PPSA through our email ad, that's secretariat at ppsa-ph.org. Um, if you have other um, like insights and suggestions that we can provide as inputs when we um, uh, contribute to drafting of some action plans and roadmap. So thank you, sir, for, for that input. So I think uh, we have to end the uh, moderated question and answer for now. Um, VJ, may I uh, turn over the mic to you? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ami and Rata, uh, and of course to our participants and speakers for that uh, very um, insightful discussion. So now, as mentioned previously, uh, this event is not just a learning session, but also an activity that will commence the conversation among companies and organizations. So we have this uh, last part of our session. So I'm now calling Borme, the Communications and Engagement Manager of uh, CPSA for the matchmaking activity. Over to you, Borme. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vijay. So uh, before we start, uh, let me quickly introduce myself again. So uh, like Vijay said, I'm uh, Bo Mai, or you can call me Mai, and uh, I'm the uh, communication and engagement person at uh, CPSA. So um, I believe that everyone is uh, looking forward to this uh, matchmaking session where we are open for um, for the connections with uh, investors, uh, investment opportunities, and many other uh, actors in coconut value chain, both in Cambodia and in the Philippines. So um, I'll explain quickly how this is going to work. So our team will launch a poll that uh, you can select uh, one or more opportunities that uh, you're looking for. And then um, we'll show the results of the poll and we'll uh, select um, one or two people, uh, depending on the time, uh, from each answer to uh, speak or um, ask questions about uh, what they're interested in. And then uh, we will uh, follow that by an uh, email exchange session. So um, uh, Vijay or Prana, why don't you um, launch our poll? Yep, so uh, I think we may have um, one or two minutes to answer the poll. Moment, we're at 40% of people have responded. So if we could get a few more, that would be great. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, so um, um, we got our uh, poll result, and I uh, think uh, everyone is able to uh, is everyone able to see the result, uh, Colonel? Yes. Okay, so um, a lot of uh, people are of course interested in um, connection with uh, other players or actors uh, in the region, and um, also another majority of people. Uh, are looking for um, investors and business uh, opportunities. I think it's in um, either in both countries or um, other countries. So uh, why don't we start with um, the first uh, option? So uh, the first option, uh, I own a coconut business and I am looking for investors or business opportunities. So uh, those who voted for uh, option one, if you have, um, if you wanna say something about plan or you want to ask uh, questions about um, investors or businesses or companies that you're interested in, uh, you may raise your hands. So those who um, um, voted for option one, could you please uh, raise your hands? Okay, so um, we have uh, Nari. So uh, Nari, go ahead if uh, you have uh, anything to talk or any, any questions you want to ask. Yes, um, I talked a bit earlier as well. Uh, so basically, so my group is a Cambodian conglomerate. We have uh, one of our division is a Soma Farm. Uh, sorry, one of our division is agriculture, div agriculture division. Within the agriculture, we have a few companies, including Soma Farm and SMCP. SMCP uh, works more on the agro processing in the northeast of the of Cambodia, where we grow corn, uh, green beans, cassava, and soybeans. And Soma Farm is more focused on the production and the agro-processing of um, la layer eggs, um, beef, and uh, orchid, and coconut. We, for the coconut business, we uh, focus on fragrant uh, young cocoa, and we just uh, support the farmers to bring it uh, to the cities and, and to the hotel, restaurant uh, markets around the, the area. It's mainly in Kompot and also in Takeo province. Uh, we are looking to um, maybe add value and quality to the products uh, for our coconut products, uh, uh, increasing maybe on the looking at new packaging and um, also uh, improving on the logistics and the branding and, and, and everything to support uh, the production and the, the farmers. So uh, we are looking for partners um, who would be interested in that, uh, also funding. So that's all. We have a concession land uh, in Compot. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Bongneri, and I hope you will uh, get to connect with uh, partners uh, after this. And uh, earlier I saw um, uh, Mr. Roy, uh, do you still have uh, something to say? Um, um, Mr. Roy, I saw you raise your hand earlier. Do you still have uh, something to say or ask? For me, I think that was uh, left over from when he asked a question in the previous round. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, if not, then we can um, um, move on to the next point. Uh, it is, um, okay, Bong uh, uh, do you have anything to say in the first um, option? Um, yeah, hello, I'm Kita from Soma the same team with uh, Ms. Nari. Actually, uh, Ms. Nari already present about our mm -hmm. company and what uh, uh, she want. I just add a little bit more. We also want to connect with the key player in the region in terms of sharing knowledge or technical aspect or something like that. And uh, we can uh, keep connect each other after uh, this uh, uh, webinar. Thank you. Maybe uh, we call internet problem. I cannot speak loud. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bong. And um, uh, Roy, do you want to say something? Yeah. 
Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon again. Yep. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, our organization, our, our cooperative, produces uh, 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 buys whole nut from the farmers, and uh, the whole nut includes the husk. No. So uh, uh, we want to, uh, if if uh, you could help us, if someone could help us, uh, we could uh, produce or perhaps uh, make. Uh, good value from the hast. Uh, earlier, I've heard about the uh, echo board, uh, the pallet, no, uh, coco pallet, no. Uh, we wanted to 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 diversify this. Uh, right now, the market for the jayonets, the fiber is down, no. Uh, that's in region. The Mindanao region and even in the Leyte area, they have stopped buying. No, so uh, we have lots of stocks of, uh, of fiber, of uh, cocoa peat, and husk. No? So uh, uh, right now it is an eyesore to us. No, it, it's like an environmental uh, nightmare for us to have so much stock, and we want to move this. We want to make a value out of this uh, uh, coconut husk. Yeah. Uh, could someone uh, provide us uh, mm. some suggestions on how to do this? We're, we're doing also cocoa peat. We have a decorticating machine from the Philippine government, and they have provided it to us. And they were doing uh, small things like handicrafts right now. Uh, but these are not enough. We, we have to move more, uh, do create more. Uh, yes. Uh, can I say something? The if you could connect with, with Kel in uh, our man in Manila, he's our partner. Uh, maybe you can discuss with him. Because, you know, a lot of people I see like they starting with agro textiles, geo textiles and things, doing what everybody is doing or starting like uh, things like soil improver. And you cannot make any margin in that. And that market is quite flushed with things from India and uh, in uh, other places so if you do what all the other people are doing then there's no business that's like the uh, the red ocean and mm -hmm. if you create like a blue ocean like we're doing then th there might be some some margin in it and it's important to have a margin and a volume and if not you know it's, it's not scalable and it will end soon it's a waste of energy so uh, yeah but uh, I think the most important thing is that the farmers and the cooperatives uh, in the higher level start working together and, and, uh, and uh, start creating the value, but also by owning the, the, the production met, uh, things like the trucks, the machines and stuff, and let be less dependent on the middleman. I think that the supply chains between the farmer and the factories are often too long. There are too many people in between and that take reap the profits. And I think that if these value chains are shorter and more flexible, then uh, it's, it's possible for the farmers to make more money while not increasing the consumer prices at the end. Yeah, thank you. What's that organization again in Manila? Well, uh, just uh, reach out to Coco Pellet and then uh, we hope we, if okay. we can help okay. you. And, and, and my colleague is also in the call, Kiel Flores. Uh, he's our, our man, and because I'm based in Amsterdam, we cannot travel. We're locked down here, and I wish I love to go to Asia, but uh, we're far away. And uh, yeah, so we're very grateful to have this uh, boots on the ground in in, in, in the Philippines. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Roy, Thank I'll connect with you. I'll I'll message you my email just in case. Um, I understand we're we're looking at um, Luzon for the meantime to uh, to put up the first factory. Um, specifically in Quezon province. Um, but yeah, uh, raw materials could, could indeed be possible even from later, but um, of course it's logistics at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, happy to explore. I'll message you my email. Um, just, just do connect with me through email, if that's okay with you. Yeah, we have partners in Laguna also. Uh, okay. They produce also a volume of uh, fiber and uh, top of it. Wonderful. So yeah, um, I'll connect with you then. Sounds good. Yes. Thanks, Roy. Thank you. And thank you also for inviting me here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. So um, uh, let's move on to the next one. I'm not sure if we ended the poll too early and you failed to uh, vote. If 
So if you fail to vote um, for option number two, you may have the chance to um, uh, talk about it or ask question. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, then um, um, uh, let's move on to option three, opportunities to invest in the Philippines. If anyone has um, anything to say or ask questions, you may raise your hand. Okay, what about uh, the next uh, one? Invest, uh, uh, opportunities to invest in. Okay, we have a um, person, LV, if I'm pronouncing it right. Hi, yeah. Hi, Bonnie. This is being the yeah, hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I am Bing Ganchero, and I am here um, representing USAID's Green Invest Asia program. Um, so essentially, the, the question is kind of very tricky because it's very specific, you know, who wants to invest? Um, so Green Invest Asia, we don't actually have a balance sheet. So it's essentially a technical assistance program, but we do um, a couple of things. So we um, provide or we uh, support companies who are um, envisage, envisaging themselves to improve their sustainable commodity production. Uh, we're very um, commodity specific, but we help companies uh, prepare themselves for investment. And we also, um, support companies, um, you know, uh, look into the things that um, that they need, for example, certification, uh, more industry um, uh, attractive. Uh, and so in that case, you know, it's not really investment as in we provide the money, but we bridge, we, pro we broker, we prepare companies and we look for uh, investors who can invest in that company. So um, I just would like to mention that um, we're focused not only in the Philippines, but also we're looking at Vietnam, Cambodia, and Indonesia. And we are looking at not only coconut, so that's kind of like the topic that we um, were focused in th this afternoon. We're also, we're also looking at rubber, timber, coffee, uh, cacao, and hopefully bamboo. So um, I am interested to actually talk to Joey as so I've expressed my interest. Um, so I think uh, Amy is going to um, help me um, set up a meeting with Joey. And if ever you are in um, the specific commodity that I just mentioned, uh, we've had initial engagement or actually talks with Cocoa pellets. So um, those are the areas where we're interested. And in. so, actually, yeah, Mike, Michael, it's it, it's good to see you here. We haven't, I haven't uh, heard from you in a long time. But anyway, so I hope you keep yourselves safe there. Okay. Hey, um, thank you so much, LV, for um, sharing. So. Um, uh, I think that uh, should be it for our um, uh, poll or uh, matchmaking session. So uh, again, you uh, may drop your uh, email addresses in the chat box and then uh, our team, uh, CPSA and PPSA, will arrange um, a further connection between uh, all of you. So I'll hand the floor back to uh, VJ. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that, uh, Borme, and to our speakers and participants for that um, initial introduction with each other and well among uh, each other. And we'll make sure that we will be a follow there will be a follow through in this discussion. So again, if you are interested to connect with companies and organizations, kindly uh, chat us your email addresses and we'll take care of the introduction for you. So before we end, I hope you can respond to our last poll. Um, which um, hope to ask you about what uh, your experience is in this um, discussion. So for us to know uh, how we did and of course to adjust to our sessions in the future. Okay.
All right. Um, I think that's it. So uh, many of you or majority uh, find this uh, session very useful. And again, we will adjust based on uh, this feedback. And of course, um, before we end, you can always uh, contact us, uh, CPSA or uh, and or PPSA through the uh, email addresses uh, flash on your screen. And of course, you can always uh, visit our website also uh, indicated on your screen. So again, um, apologies for extending beyond uh, 4 p.m. So thank you so much to all our uh, panelists, Mikkel, Joe, uh, Joey, Bing, Pam, Jonathan, and Sinon for their uh, time and insights. And we also thank our participants for the active engagements. So um, you may also um, continue to visit our channels. And of course, uh, the presentation and the recordings will be sent to all and will be uploaded to our YouTube and Spotify accounts. So again, thank you so much and keep safe. Thank you. Thank you.